Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you both look and feel your best. Now with that comes the looking and feeling your best part. You can't actually look your best if you don't feel your best. And in today's episode, we have a very exciting guest joining us. We're going to be diving deep into gestures and movement, presentation, and also hormones. So the ladies, you're going to, what you're going to get out of this is my intention is for you to have more self-awareness of what you're doing with your body and also observing potential male suitors for some of these aspects. And then for the gentlemen, this is really something to support you in how you show up and sharing Mike as a resource for you to tune in because basically what he's doing is sort of like the masculine version of what I'm doing in regards to how we show up, how we bring our best presence forward, and also how we observe and make better decisions of who we decide to make friends with, form relationships with, and also professionally as well. So we have Mike joining us here, and Mike's full name is Mike Skripchak, and let me tell you a little bit about him. He is a combat veteran and healthcare professional dedicated to serving others. Mike spent 12 years in the U.S. Navy, including a tour in Iraq as a combat medic. His experience spans both military and civilian settings, with 10 years as a computed tomography and radiography technologist. He's honed his expertise in diagnostic image and patient care, supervising radiography and professionals, and managing department operations in level two trauma environments. He also has a passion for health and fitness. So beyond healthcare, Mike is passionate about helping individuals achieve their health and fitness goals. He's pioneered a holistic approach, combining functional health and harm prevention, particularly within the competitive bodybuilding niche. His coaching has helped numerous clients succeed across various fitness domains, including IFBB pro Olympian level athletes. His current focus is on men's health and also business solutions. Currently, he's dedicated to helping men outside of competitive bodybuilding spaces, optimize their gut and hormone health, and of course, achieving their ideal physique. Welcome, 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 Mike Skripchek. How are you today? And of course, the unlimited dollar question, what is radiance to you? Uh, well, first of all, I, f I feel radiant already. So uh, uh, radiance to me is uh, an aura and out and what I bring when I'm in anywhere. So when I what I bring with me, what do I ready? Like, how do I make people feel when they first at the first sight? And then, you know, when they communicate with me and uh, uh, it's just the whole personal experience that attached to me. And it's not about what you say, but it's uh, what you radiate and how your radiance makes people feel. And that's what makes you remembered. Yeah, that's beautiful. And for those of you who have tuned into the show before, you've heard me say that always being ready, always being resilient is a huge part of always being radiant. This is why I love, I love that you have a combat background and uh, before recording, we had to do some setup stuff and you remained cool, calm, collected. Tell us a little bit about adaptability and how some people, when they encounter a tricky situation where maybe just something didn't quite happen right, how some people respond and maybe how they could respond better with their entire facial gestures, with their movements, and also with what they say. Um, that's a very good question. And uh, to me, it comes from accepting my upbringing and what I've learned as, you know, as a child, as a little boy, or you're a little girl. And it goes from the, the very beginning of the, our learned behavior. So the gestures, the movement, the how we react, we learned that from some. And uh, we have an idea in us what do I look like? What do I present? What do I ready? But unless we see that on video, 
we will never know. So without an awareness and being able to accept the reflection in the mirror, there's going to be no way to really change anything about ourselves. Because first of all, you have to first face yourself in a mirror and then decide in a sense, do I even really need to face the mirror? Maybe I radiate and everything's totally fine around me. You know, I attract right tribe, right people. Uh, I make other people good in my micro, macro social circle. So why change anything if everything's good? That the awareness comes from, hey, I'm not sure. Why do I attract XYZ people? Why people treat me a certain way? I, I seem to say the right thing. I seem to do the right thing. Yet, the only thing, it's our perceptions of ourselves. So the best thing is observe ourselves from the third person. And the only way to do it is through recording ourselves on a video with everyday tasks. Have you seen yourself? How do you pick up like a teapot when you're making your tea? Have you seen yourself? How do you shake somebody's hand? Uh, the worst thing, have you seen yourself being maybe a little upset at some? What does your body talk? And it's not about what we say, but how we say it. And with women, especially us men perceiving women, I'm so in tune to the micro expressions of a woman. So it's not really about what she said, but how she said it. And the mind of woman is uh, very emotionally colorful. And these colors are radiate through her movement. So biggest, uh, like, I guess, awareness that I've learned first personally of myself is I have to understand my why. Why do I want to be better? Why do I want to, you know, change my movement patterns? And that was that why I want to ask myself, is that worth it right now? Is that the priority? Uh, maybe I should take care of my biological health. Maybe I should tackle that first. And uh, so there's a, there's got to be a structure involved. And you know, like achieving the body, like losing fat, gaining muscle, it, there's always got to be a, a structure, a plan. You can't tackle everything at once. So going back to what you just said, it's about how you feel, you know, your biology. So to me, biology comes first, address the biology, get yourself feeling good. Then you can ask yourself questions. What's my why? And am I brave enough to face the mirror? And then what happens after you unpack your why, you get your biology right, mm -hmm. you look at the mirror, you've done this work, and you say to yourself, how did that happen? Right? This stuff isn't overnight. This is cumulative. This honestly it took me mm -hmm. years to learn through observing people and then just had a huge shift myself. And um, I would say a year ago that three years ago, when I would see myself outdoors in the wilderness doing my four by fouring and all that fun stuff, you know, I was really okay. carrying okay. myself as mm -hmm. this very masculine version of myself. And I didn't like that, especially because I had to What do you, you mean know? exactly masculine version of yeah. yourself, four by four, four wheeling? What does that really mean to you? How do yeah, you see a, yourself in masculine version? It was, I think it was a trauma response because I didn't feel safe. So I overcompensated with walking really tough. Mm -hmm. Who was your role model that you oh. uh, maybe got that walk out of? So well, I, I think I think about my papa and he stormed the beaches of Normandy in World War II. Just a beautiful man, very stoic, never raised mm -hmm. his voice. I you would appreciate him. And then of course my mother, who was a night nurse for over 20 years, put on 20 pounds, had breast cancer, beat the cancer, lost the weight. Wow, I'm sorry, okay. Learned about the importance of self-care. Mm -hmm. But then I think it was more in my, my adulthood and just with, I'm sure some of you can relate just with the world, what's going on with the world. So looking back, I had this way that I would move. That was like a very like tough, I'm tomboy, right? I can do all this stuff that most girls can't. Can I ask you a question was the tomboyish walk? 
was do you think that was maybe because you're trying to get approval and be liked by uh your you said papa grand, grandfather correct i would say it was more so growing up i found that young girls were a little bit more kind of you're my best friend no you're my best friend and i just actually thought that that wasn't very fun to be around so i started to play with the boys right my uh, parents had their best friends all had boys so i grew up doing a lot of sort of like the tomboyish things and i th i thought to myself growing up hey if i'm a tomboy myself i'm going to be more able to kind of like intimidate other men that might not be good men and that actually i that culturally though as well right if you think about north american women if you think about north american men here's where we're getting into some deep programming here women were also praised for being tough you know working like a man being praised and for that comes from post war era totally yeah definitely mm -hmm. and then for the men uh, what have you seen happen uh for men um it's it's really like just going back and i want to stay in the childhood and uh just just let's stay with that inner child uh so again environment and a micro and macro social circle that you surround yourself and you know your five close friends that will you become so it has a huge impact on our learned behavior when it comes to movement, posture, and you're trying to fit in and you're trying to be, uh, you know, part of the pack. And, you know, regardless, despite of your, you know, differences in biology and, you know, it's like, have you ever seen that uh, video when uh, um, a kitty was raised by, I think, bulldogs or something? And it was just sitting like- I have, dog. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it acts yes. just like the bulldog. <laughs> yes. So that's, uh, that's probably the biggest uh, analogy I would make that is just adorable, uh, that uh, it's environment. And that's what mm -hmm. we, you know, uh, what we learn. And from there, question before I go into men, a good feminine role model, how many of them were right there that radiated that softness, movement, flow, and uh, just beauty? That was my Nana, my mm -hmm. mother's mother. Oh, wow. What a beautiful prayer warrior woman. I, again, can't remember a single time where she ever swore. She never rose raised her voice and she always looked after her body. She was always slim, looked after herself, ate well. And she was just a gorgeous woman. Absolutely. And I spent a lot of time with her as well. And was there when uh, she passed away, same with my papa holding their hands, very oh, beautiful memories. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the example was there. So you pretty much were around this perfect relationship from the day one so you've seen the differences in you know masculine feminine you see how it united in polarity and uh oh, what was next for you send boys and then yeah i i mean i wanted to fit in with the boys they were so much more fun to hang out with than the girls <laughs> okay, uh, I... question now were you um and I want you to be most honest and usually ladies know just kind of like us men, we know where we stand in hierarchy. So mm -hmm. women always uh, rank themselves uh, by the beauty standards, attention standards. As the young girl, do you remember you were getting most attention all the time and you were turning most heads and people wanted to talk to you and all this? So now we roll in into psychology of, of indirect female aggression. So when you grown up in the pack with other uh, girls, and that story reminds me uh, some that my lady shared as well. Well, no, actually, I never turned heads growing up. I was the awkward, sort of like dorky Attention. tomboy. It's not. Know? It's not about. It's a child turn heads. Like were mm. you? How does the boys? Boys liked you, correct? They enjoyed being I, like I, yeah they like i was in a punk rock band and i was the only guitarist mm -hmm. yeah they liked having a girl in the band it was fun so 
again, but the relationship in the pack with other girls when you were younger, how was it like from the childhood? Were you accepted or, you know, there was maybe some other things that were happening between both of you like that? That's what uh, I think. Yeah, I didn't feel accepted because I was I wasn't anyone's best friend. Right. I had some best friends growing up later, but that was always really interesting for me growing up. It's like, why looking at all the other popular girls? It's like, I'm kind, I'm fun too, but I was never really one of them, but I definitely had more fun and was more uh, welcomed by the guys and doing fun activities as well. So that's where the tomboy, I suppose, was born. (laughs) Well, that's, I think that's a clear answer right now. So a lot of behavior and movement patterns were basically coming from the interaction with bunch of little boys and from there you learn you know and probably turn on an autopilot so that's how i walk that's how i do and uh, that you were accepted so then as you grew and moved into life it's it's became you know a habitual thing so where's that awareness come in where like i want to level up i want to walk in in different rooms i want to get uh uh, certain and different response attention the feedback from you know guys as well like i want to be treated like a lady like a woman not like a tomboy mm-hmm. so and a re- reference back for man uh to me so same there for men uh if a little boy was always raised by a bunch of women he was learning how to take directions from women. He was learn how to navigate and get his way with women. So that it's different type of leadership. Uh, and uh, also there is no, I, I believe there is not, it's, it's never gonna be perceived in the same way when women try to discipline a boy and I was raised by a single mom. So when my mother always tried to discipline me and like Mike like this and yell at me and whatever, and I've got all of it, which is totally fine, the culture it got spanking it always came off like my inner masculine would always try to fight her masculine and i would not listen i'd be stubborn because i know it was in this little boy that my inner masculine supersedes her and i will not submit because i was meant to be raised to lead and protect and provide so the moment i remember that moment so solely as the little boy and it was different. My mom told me, I'm really disappointed and it really hurts me. And she showed me that vulnerability. <sighs> that hurt. That made me like, <gasps> like, mama, like, I don't want you to hurt. So now in society, we have completely skewed perception where I've seen it a lot during the podcast and the, you know, the, the reels, social media. Well, woman like, as the man, you should show your vulnerability. And to me, I think it's projection because a lot of times lady would project and want to see men to show vulnerability, kind of lead the way, show your vulnerability to me. And then maybe I can open up and show mine because they're stuck in that masculine. So, and the issue, the moment I, as the man, show you my vulnerability. And for some odd reason, I don't have a plan I just showed you my weakness without the execution, without a plan, without the direction. Your inner subconscious will absolutely be (laughs) guessing, is that safe? So ladies, be careful what you ask for from a man. If you want him vulnerable, does he, is he there on his timeline of his path, of his growth, of his evolution as the man? That when he's like, hey, yeah, that hurt me, that, that was painful. Yet, my emotions have nothing to do with what am I going to do? They're not going to lead. They're not going to affect my actions. So the, the difference here is right now, we expect a lot of things that shape the way we respond, react, and also move. So expecting men to be vulnerable, taking commands from other women, being around women, being shaped and you know disciplined by other women absolutely will make him move and present himself like a woman. So, um, and what that means, 
woman peripheral vision is, you know, way more sensory woman biology sleeps much more in, like you're, you're you're you can hear things i can be dead asleep and my lady be like oh i heard this and i'm like what we're always checking for that safety so your body responds and reacts so if a little boy a man constantly surrounded around that type of uh you know, he's exposed to it he's gonna take on those mo gestures movements and if there is no a good role models, no strong masculine support network, no accountability, uh, where m men keep each other accountable. Men that are fully integrated in masculinity, and we're going to straight up tell you how it is. And that is lacking. So now you start taking on the movement patterns, also the response pattern, and that all comes together. And that's where it becomes, uh, very pronounced and noticed where now you expect like, oh, I want assertiveness. I want direction, guidance, but I get this. Oh, or I'm like, yeah, how are you doing them? You know, if I start talking like this, leaning into camera, doing all this and reacting, you know, like that's it. It makes women and puts her at very uneasy state because deep inside your subconscious knows that anytime there is a speed up in any type of movement, because body fears, what is man's capacity? How does he handle fear, uncertainty? Is he fidgeting? Is he responding? Does he, you know, with this micro expressions in his movement, does he make you feel at ease? It's like, uh, also as, as of right now, let's say, um, if I'm be talking to you like this, yeah, sure. Everything's good. What do I translate? A lot of tension where mm -hmm. pinches in my traps. What does it do? It's that a defensive mechanism of protection. I'm stressed. So if I'm walking around like this and I don't do any type of exercises to bring my shoulders down to, you know, work that posterior chain with just my presence, I might be feeling okay and not stressed, but my body, the way it's aligned, the way it is, it's going to be making you feel very uneasy because I'm translating too much stress. So all of that is learned behavior. It's how we respond to micro, macro, social uh, you know, um, where we in, you know, around people. And then of course, uh, what do we have going on inside with our biology? So that's all shapes mm -hmm. us. So man or woman, it's all learned behavior. And, uh, I want to culminate on, uh, the point here is that we get fixed on, uh, you know, people's opinions and judging the best thing, your camera, your video, like is the best part of it. Record yourself doing certain movements, actions, and then look at it. Oh, that was Mike. Then what Mike right now can do better. It, it's like, and for the ladies, I think the best analogy I like to do is, um, hypersexuality. Oh, I don't know. They're all hitting me at workplace. I, I don't know. I don't say anything. I don't do anything, but just, they keep hitting on me or what's going on. So sure. I can uh, fix my hair like this. Or I couldn't fix my hair like that. And I mean, this is a man's expression of woman, but what did I just do? Wrist exposure, armpit exposure, movement. Now I feel like I'm feeling and myself in my breasts. So now also I can be sitting here and have a little glass and I'm stroking it. We men react to this like this. We might not think anything of it, but we'd be like, what's going on? Because evolution made us program to respond to those, those cues. So uh, that, you know, that is like the, the gimme. So video, record yourself and, uh, and uh, then analyze yourself or hire a coach, someone like, a lady can come to you and just uh, what I would suggest to my men friends, perform an action, take a seat on the table, or, like take a seat and take a drink of water. 
record yourself. Try to do it like the worst way possible, then try to do it a normal way and try to do it the best way possible that you're going to present yourself. And mm -hmm. then evaluate that. And it's going to tell you a story because we have an idea of what we'll look like, but what is it in reality it can be a completely different thing. Uh, that's why a lot of people say, oh, I just don't like myself on camera. Why is that? Yeah, I had a call with uh, beautiful Monica just before this, and she's like, tell me about the membership. Like, I, I, I just, I record something, I take a picture, and I just, I never have the confidence to, to post it. And honestly, like, having the ability to show up these days is even directly tied to our income. Like, that's how important this stuff is. It's huge. The way that we show up, the way that we speak, the way that we present ourselves can either close doors or it can open doors. And you, when you were doing the, the hair flick with exposing the wrist and the armpit, um, one, of my, one of my clients is she's a, a dancer and I love her dearly. And uh, she's like, it's, you know, sometimes I do things and I end up making more money that night. And I, and, and I shared with her, you know what would probably make you more money? and this is applicable to anything, no matter what you do, mm -hmm. is to actually slow down your movements. Yes. Slow down. So it's not just doing a movement, but it's doing it in a very beautiful feminine way. And actually, here's the magic. As a woman, when you're doing something, mm -hmm. say you're moving your hair, notice how gorgeous your hair feels like actually get a degree of pleasure from it or you're putting your jacket on and you're going over your arm it's like oh i'm putting this beautiful jacket on this looks great on me having some kind of of pleasure associated with it i think is going to have a more you're going to get more self-pleasure it's going to make more of these little mundane tasks in life just a little bit more like zaza do with you though. I get jealous and I'm going to fess up. I get jealous. And we actually have a thing with my lady when at times she does the same thing. She slows down. She sits there and just plays with her hair and we're driving somewhere. I'm thinking there, I'm like, oh, I got this, this, this. So like, I kind of like in my mind. So she starts doing this slow movements and kind of like start, you know, I like making her and it's like, oh, it feels so nice. And she just sits there and I'm like, Exactly. I'm jealous because like, I want to pleasure you. I want to like, I want to be that guy who gives you pleasure. I don't want you to pleasure yourself. So <laughs> now you brought that up. Thank you. So you want much. in on the fun, right? And I uh, mean, women, like we have this, we have this power and yeah. we, I think we're well, getting back to dear Monica, who I just connected with. She wants to, get her light back. And I thought about that song growing up. I had a great childhood, Christian upbringing. Mm -hmm. And so the, the song popped into my mind. It's like this little light of mine. We've all heard that song. And there, for some reason, when we become an adult and we got to do the job, we got to do the house, we got to do the relationship, got to do the kids, we got to do all this stuff. But we forget about us and we forget about really how important self-awareness is about everything we're doing. And I know that you love to coach men on testosterone levels. <laughs> testosterone levels, it's a thing. You can tell, and I know we're going to get into this, and you're. I'm, I would love to ask you this question mm -hmm. on how men present when they're showing healthier levels of elevated testosterone versus when they don't. And then also, um, before you answer that, just kind of a, a mention in here for the ladies that when women are in a high cortisol, high adrenaline state, they're going to be jittered. They're going to be scattered because that hormonal energy is like a fight, flight, or freeze. And it's not calculated compared to more noradrenaline, which is more clear cut, concise, which is what you would have done in the military. What's the target? And, you know, basically take the action needed to accomplish that. 
which I think is, that's why I like cold therapy to actually help to trigger that nervous system response in stressful situations. It's very valuable so that when you're stressed out, you don't become this like jittery, you know, overly expressive, shaky movements, you lose your balance, like all these things that we just don't think about. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, well, actually, before that question of how testosterone impacts the male presence, I did want to add because I had an aha moment when you were giving me some laser coaching there. Thank you, Mike. I can tell you're very good at what you do. That's why I actually sought you out to be on the show from your content online. So I'm like, this guy's brilliant. And I I actually spent a lot of time growing up with my dad because my mom was a night nurse of beautiful, um, beautiful parents. They're still with us. And my mom was sleeping all the time. So I would hang out with my dad and we'd go to car shows well, and that's right. Sleeping all the time. Like, Oh, cause she was a night nurse. She'd have to sleep during the day. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. To put my sister and I in a really good school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my dad's a carpenter and I spent a lot of time with him and, doing, you know, woodworking stuff. One of my favorite smells growing up is, and still to this day is either sawdust or exhaust from a carbureted V8 with Flowmasters. I'll take that over Chanel 5 any day. <laughs> it was funny when you were asking me those questions, like that's why. And then attachment styles is such a big part of that too. That's a whole other topic, but that's really key. Talk to us about how, when a man has healthy higher levels of testosterone, how they move differently? Uh, well, uh, first, uh, testosterone has to come with experience. So uh, just uh, exogenously blowing up your testosterone and not having life experience is, uh, it can be very dangerous. So uh, your ability to handle stress, facing stressful situation, uh, having that adrenaline rush, um, most men, if they watch, some of them might relate when you have the crazy pursuit for a few sweating, you cannot stop. It's like just crazy adrenaline pounding, uh, things like that. So you, you have to get exposed to challenges you have to get. And I, I'm not saying like, you know, life or death situations, but that you have to be in, in the arena as the man. So if you're just exogenously superficially blown up levels of testosterone. Oh, I'm just going to biohack myself as the man. And I get myself to that high normal range, just, you know, 800, 1200, but you haven't earned that with the experience. So we have to attach life experience challenges, overcoming those challenges, failing, getting up, conquering, conditioning our mind to earn that testosterone. So now when environment is polluted, we're exposed to a lot of stress and, you know, maybe there's toxins, maybe, maybe there's bacteria, whatever it is, pathogens, and then your levels drop and, uh, you know, it makes sense to bring them up, but the most, I think, disregarded aspect of testosterone related, uh, testosterone replacement therapy is that they forget to add life experience you have to add challenge to testosterone because um, testosterone without you overcoming challenges, without handling certain situation can become quite dangerous because you don't know, you know, how to respond to the life situation. So to me, that's what I always say, unless it's a clinical hypogonadism, like as a young man, you have to be solely focused on naturally maximizing and optimizing testosterone and uh, just do whatever you can to overcome the challenges. So also that comes with um, uh, environment and how does environment uh, responds to you. So if let's say if you were raised by a mother and uh, you reassemble every aspect of your father, so anything that you do it's always you be mocked and you know, there's a lot of response. So you become very unsure and uncertain. How did mommy's going to take me because I want mommy to, you know, like me. So now how is your upbringing? Does your mom instigate in you, uh, you know, the ability to go get hurt, get that experience, get up. And if needed, 
receive that warmth and motherly love. Oh, I always had that as a kid because I'd be playing with the boys. I have so many scars on my knees, ladies and gentlemen, from having a full I'm talking child, about right? men. I'm not and I always had that care. Yeah, but just for the, the ladies listening as well. Yeah, so like, it, it's got to be different for girls. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you get the scars and you overcome pain like a man, it conditions you to respond to stress and overcome stress like a man. So on subconscious level was your movement, the way you, you know, respond to the life situations make you very unattractive to other men. Because you don't express your emotions, your feelings, you know, your vulnerability. And that is unattractive to me. If women are unable to show her vulnerability and, and you know, I'm weak and that and take care of me, I have no need to be there. I want to be needed. So as the little boy, the, the, the and I'm going to share my personal story. As I was a little boy and mom told me that story and I don't, and I love my mom to death and everything yet right now I have very good awareness of what was happening. Mom gave me motherly love and she would see me. She remembered that Mike, you were three years old and you run around, you really hurt yourself and you just there and you're holding it. And what did my mother do? Oh, son, come here. It's okay to cry. Go ahead. Cry. Go. She made me cry. She, she wanted to see my tears. She wanted me to let go. That's what woman does for a little boy. Son, you're so strong. Son, that is very strong of you. You know, but I tell you one thing, if it gets too much, you know, you can come here and I still love you and I'll not tell anybody. So reward the toughness, reward the overcoming of challenges, point out you're tough, you're strong, see warrior in him, respond to him in that matter. And that's what happens because men are raised by single ladies, single women. So now, oh, go cry. And I don't want to say like, that's for everyone. But that the lack of masculine figure, an example that will basically get you to, hey, I believe in you, son. That's okay. Keep getting up. Keep going. And you know what? If you fall, I got your back. Like a father, like son, I got your back. No matter what, I got your back. And then, you know, the brothers, the friends, you know, you got to pick friends that, that will have your back. And they will not betray you. So. That's how you build that camaraderie that, and so now do you see you being around boys, what you could have acquired and see what I being like, if I'm around women and women always constantly telling me like how to handle stress, go about stress. And I don't have that masculine support, uh, a figure. And I love my father to death too, but he was raised by five women and he was the youngest child in the family that received the most love. That's why my father became most successful in the family, most successful businessman and whatever. And so, because he was the youngest child who received most love from mom. And you ever heard that? The child who received the most love always becomes more successful. This, so is, now, gold. this is so golden for all the parents tuning in. Oh, on, of course. Oh my gosh. And, and now, and now my father was raised by five women because my grandpa, went to war, World War II. He took Berlin. He was a tanker. He was one of the few men who actually returned, but he sustained such a bad traumatic brain injury that he lasted only for a year. So grandpa faked his age at 17 and went to front lines, became a commander of the tank, took Berlin, came back and only lived a year after, and then he passed. So my grandmother was left with five kids. My father was the youngest. He had an uh, um, older brother and another brother. So, but majority of raising was done by two older sisters and a mother. So that was the authority. And the whole village where my father grew up lacked men because they all died. So how can I blame my father or be upset at my father? Because, you know, and he, he's a successful man, but a lot of patterns, movements, the way he responds, I acquired it. And then I became aware of them. So same was with mother. So, and that's my story. So we have to become aware of our past and really pick point and understand how did our parents were raised? 
And then how did they raise us? And then get into our childhood friends, high school friends, and then get into, you know, our network right now. Yeah, it's when you're talking about friendships, for me personally, I started to get all these GoPros when I started to offer rejuvenation services. That was interesting. And I definitely noticed that it's like everyone wants to be my best friend now because I can do their faces. And actually, through in my career is where I finally learned how to have female relationships and friendships. And when, like, just as you said, with men, men need to have this community of other guys who are going to call them out on their ish. And the other side of that, I think for women is to also have that from their girlfriends, but to also have a community to celebrate your wins with and celebrate together and not have like the, the female jealousy thing in modern culture in North America is is an interesting thing to notice. And, and I'm really it, glad that you brought it What does it, it mean to you, like female jealousy? What does it mean to you? Like how, how do you understand the female jealousy in Western culture? When I observe it, it's sort of a lack of warmth. That's how I see it play out. Why do you think that happens? Well, I can think of in my career going to different events and you know there's people that have been doing what i had just started to learn how to do back in 2011 and they just weren't very warm i think they saw maybe me as even competition of oh i'll take their clients or something like that and then i never forgot that of how i felt when i first started in the medical aesthetics industry and there were a few people who were warm to me and all of that, but there weren't many. And so when I'm at an event and I teach now, I'm always excited to see someone new and welcome them. I remember I said to this uh, one young woman, welcome to the club and was warm about it because it's almost like I was compensating how I was never accepted to then now accept yeah. women and help them. That's why I help women. <laughs> so you bring value to the, you know, um, the community. Of You're women. so good at what you do, Mike. I can, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, for that, uh, do you feel the difference? Do you feel fulfillment right now? Do you, the oh feedback. Gosh, yes. So what change in how women respond to you non-verbally with their movement? Um, what do you think? So you became uh, an expert, someone who can make women uh, more beautiful. So you beautify them. So going back to the childhood and interaction with small girls and what would be equivalent of that? And that's for ladies to maybe respond in comments mm -hmm. and uh, you know what would be equivalent of uh, someone like you helping women to beautify themselves in the childhood, what would little girl can do to bring value to other girls? Like, what would that be? So why one girls would be like, ah, we don't want you. And another one, uh, on, they try to be like little packs. So what is that? What is that? What came up for me was how their mothers were. Say, for example, as I remember vividly, oh. I was playing I was playing house with a few girls. There was, I think, about three or four of us. This was, I was five years old at this point. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you're my best friend. No, you're, and I was like, this, I'm not having any of this. I have a feeling looking back that mm -hmm. those little girls probably learned that from their mothers, probably yes. overheard phone conversations. Mm -hmm. And I never had that growing up, right? It was always kind and warm and healthy friendships that I saw my parents having. So this, it was very uh, foreign to me to see that. It's like, I don't, I shouldn't be around this. I don't think this is good behavior. But so, the guys, the boys, they would have had that probably from their parents as well. A healthy uh, friendship role models. And the difference between man and woman. So like I call it the pimp syndrome. 
So when uh, prostitutes get recruited, that recruiting new ones. So there's the girl that sets up and kind of warms the other girl and then bring them in the circle and other girls tell them like, oh, that's okay. That's totally fine. And that's how it become, becomes a norm. A lot of times in man, it's, it's quite different. But when other women say, that's why Hugh Hefner happened, that's why the Playboy mention happened, that Jeffrey Dahmer happened, it's like the programming by other women. So what you're saying it makes total sense that other women, the elder women that they're looking up to, maybe they were over talking about, oh, her mother or this and that. Now, they observe the mother patterns, the way the mother move, mother like daughter. So now subconsciously you reassemble your mother that been programmed. <laughs> and then who or my father that I spent a lot of time oh, with. Right? You describe your father being a very masculine, you oh, know, yeah. very, very calm, you know, mm -hmm. assertive, a man, man, mm -hmm. maybe those women settle for less, but they actually wanted your, because, you know, before everything was kind of close. So maybe that was uh, also the competition, like, oh, he, she got oh. that perfect man. So I'm mm. not going to like her because she took the prize and I got left with leftovers. Mm. Who was more successful uh, out of those ladies? If you remember, was uh, the, the grandfather of yours or maybe grandfather of theirs? That's the question. What, uh, which group of women are you referring to? The one that, that raised those little girls that didn't accept you. I don't know anything about their parents and they were from school. And a lot of them, the kids that I grew up with that were girls were often from like church. And uh, this was actually when I went to public school mm -hmm. and then my parents put me in private school in grade five and I had such better friendships Mm -hmm. from my friends that I made at that school. Did it cost and a lot of money? Did it cost a lot of money? It wasn't a like really expensive private school. It was a Christian school. There were huge differences in socioeconomic incomes. The school actually gave a lot of bursaries to lower income families. And there were a lot of donors in the school. I would say it was middle class sprinkled with, you know, some one of my good guy friends growing up, his dad invented JavaScript on cell phones. Oh wow! So so it was like I it was a mix. Running the coffee cup. I know, right? right? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a mix, but it, I th I think he was. I remember telling my parents, "Don't ever take me out of the school," mm -hmm. because I saw the value mm -hmm. in being around. I what I would say healthier families across the board with better values so, you know simply having a, a faith right a spiritual practice that being christian i learned that at a really young age actually that's uh that makes total sense right now so changing the micro social group uh where it resonated more was your upbringing so the way you moved the way you presented yourself the way you showed up the way your radiance you know, were, did not match the radiance of the little girls then. Mm -hmm. So, and I think throughout life, we go searching for first, what is me? Is that the level I want to be? Or I was meant for more. And mm -hmm. then either we settle for less and we regret that, Hey, I've could have done more, or we continue to evolve, grow and get better. And uh, eventually if we don't quit, we're going to, get to what we were meant to be and become and be around. So mm -hmm. I received a email the other day from Kathy mm -hmm. and she said, you know, I'm so grateful for what you're doing on the show and online to get a lot of value I've been following you for years. Mm -hmm. And here's some information of some things that worked for me and some practitioners that really helped me. And maybe you can share this with someone else on the show. I'm going to oh, be sharing cool. it on the show. And she said, that's my, that's my contribution. So the, the contributions that we make to make people's lives better, it doesn't have to be having a podcast and like having all this stuff online and doing this, that, and the other thing. It can literally be showing empathy and kindness to other people. 
kindness to your children, finding parents that also, it's interesting, I looked finding uh, with my eyes, so I study NLP too, but, but finding other families for your kids to hang out with because you've hit the nail on the head of really why I was a tomboy. And this, it's, it's key. So I would say, you know, really from a, from a young age, having those balanced exposures to have your kids play with boys and girls, and also in your social circles too, having that balanced exposures of, of being around men and women and having friends and group settings and all of that, I think are so key. So when it comes to making friends and determining who are going to be good people to hang out with? This is, you know, I love the intelligence side of things. I'm a huge fan of like gathering intelligence to then take the time to make a decision and then take action. It's really the decision making, the strategy that takes the most amount of time. But one thing that's really key, I think, in that process is to observe people's micro expressions. What do you notice between people? who are really over exuberant with their expressions, right? Big smiles, big eyes, raising those eyebrows up all the time, hands everywhere compared to people like yourself who are more stoic mm -hmm. and who are a little bit more relaxed. What does that really say about somebody with the way that they present themselves for you listening and also for you to take this information to get intel and intelligence on people around you who you might be considering forming relationships with? Uh, I, I don't know what's going on and it's very individual. I think it's very personal. So uh, it's delicate, a very delicate subject to, you know, say like out loud, oh, why they do that. Uh, personally, I'm going to talk about myself. So before why I did it, why I was reacting well, because I've learned that from my parents and, uh, and, and the, the groups of people I've been around. So that's exactly why. So again, and that over exaggeration of any type of expression, it means that I'm not getting hurt. So look at me right now. I'm doing a podcast right now and I'll be like, okay, guys, so the high levels of testosterone and like, so what um what that subconsciously tells was my nonverbal so at first i'm leaning in because i subconsciously probably think like i'm not going to be heard now i'm speeding up because i'm afraid that people are not going to listen to the whole thing that i have to say and then i'm making myself smaller and i'm trying to push it in i made a little reel on it and i say stop the t-rex hands and stop doing this because subconsciously you're saying that hey Probably they don't want to hear the, the entire thing I want to say. And now you're making yourself smaller. You're, you're more sporadic. And uh, uh, that type of movement is uh, just, it's, it's exaggerated because deep inside, when I myself used to do that, I wasn't confident enough that what I had to say, what, I, what other people would hear me saying, not going to be perceived in the right manner because I could not deliver that and uh calm going back to your advice slow down and if you notice people with the higher status um they speak slow and they don't waste their time if you didn't hurt me and uh also i like to do it and like even in public and somebody try to speed up and tell me i was like um so what, what do you want on your coffee i'm like oh um i would like sugar-free vanilla and the regular milk what do you i'm like yeah the the milk from cow <laughs> and i make a little joke uh but in a sense where it's not uh you know i'm not i'm not making them feel uncomfortable you know because they're trying to speed me up they trying to but then again i'm in the moment and i'm conversational and uh, that's really all about but again if i'm not heard if i'm not accepted um, like I always tell, and this is for every man out there, three-year-old boy, it actually comes from 
book, Rollo Tomasi, again, it's a red pill book. Um, I went through that stage myself. There are certain things in that book that is great, certain things that uh, I don't agree with because of my faith, my belief in God and Christ. So the biggest thing that I've got from that book, every three-year-old boy born, and he is the most alpha he can be. And then society conditions to him to be not that alpha. Think about three-year-old boy. He gets everywhere. He climbs. He touches the stove. He hurts. He bumps the knees. He comes to people like, hey, guys. Oh, who are you? Oh, who are you guys? Fine. I'm going to go find somebody else. He is not concerned. He's exploring. He is finding and getting so absorbed and, you know, excited about, I don't know, flowers, things, uh, bugs, you know, they can grow in a little thing like, well, see how she's going to respond, <laughs> but is, is unfazed. And, uh, that's, that's how boy is raised, but then he learns that, you know, there's going to be a certain reaction with everything. And so, that's why I say when you see a little child and especially parents, and if they do some repeat after them. So if, if it goes, do it. And then so they see that you're mimicking them back. So that nonverbal mimicking back. And I saw you, I noticed you, you important. And then you can add your tweak. You did this. And then how about you? So you show them to slow down or you can correct them with your movement because they so catch you on the movement and patterns. So that's, um, that's the whole thing. So how do we show up for the world with our movement? It's not about like why people do it. They do it because they learned that somewhere they went through experiences and, uh, I've get, um, I've got a lot of uh, different type of feedbacks when I post my reels about movement, but those sole reels were because I could not find a way to drive traffic to my IG page. So I was like, let me talk about movement and see what people say. It's just to me. It was well, so I found you through that because I explore and I study these concepts. Mm -hmm. So great job. Thanks, Algorithm. And, and I truly believe in this. And to me, uh, the way people have different opinions about different movement patterns uh, is, uh, is solely because what is their, their group, their microsocial environment, the group, like what is their microsocial circle? If the certain type of movement patterns and behaviors are accepted and people just not give them a big deal, it's not important, then I'm happy for them. So then they should remain like that and skate. And I'm nobody to judge them to move they do. Yet when a person is completely uh, not open-minded, and he doesn't realize that, you know, the way you move and you walk in in the wrong room, you know, you having that interview, you having that business meeting, you meeting a lady fidgeting, doing this. And, you know, like you're just going to stress her out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from my perspective, if I see a guy mm -hmm. and, uh, their movements or just even at the gym, if people are moving like really kind of like jittery or just like they can't really balance, mm -hmm. I think oxidative stress, I think nervous system dysregulation. Oh boy, here we go. Here's and the I coach. Think, <laughs> and I think trauma. Uh -huh. So I notice these things. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it's not from a place of judgment it's actually from a place of like honestly from empathy because seeing how someone moves can really give me insight into maybe what their biology is doing right now maybe something's going on in their life or something really hard happened in their life and to notice this and to kind of like have this more empathy like i can approach people like that very differently than someone who is confident and Would I'm you not a man versus woman the same way or not. I tend to observe it. I mean, I'm single now cats out of the bag. Um, I, I'm really like noticing men. They're just everywhere. Like these gorgeous, good looking men are absolutely everywhere. Now. Like, because I'm actually noticing them. But, and, and for me, like from a biological perspective, I'm also adding that layer of mm -hmm. who could potentially be a suitor 
and the father of my children. I'm looking for a really good biological match. I'm looking for a regulated nervous system. They've overcome the challenges. They have the maturity. They have, you know, good levels of testosterone and know how to yield it with strength and power and all these things. Like I'm really focusing on this. And then for the women who I serve, a lot of what I notice is actually impacts on the nervous system, especially for people who wear smart watches. They're very jittery. And then I also, so I talk about that, like stop wearing your smart watch. Mm -hmm. It's not making you any more smart cats out of the bag on that one too. <laughs> but then the other thing is brain fog and having the inability to complete coherent sentences. And it's heartbreaking when I see this, when I'm talking with women, because they got to really clean up their environment on um, and biohacking and all that stuff can help really calming the mind, which the, calming the biology, like you have to calm the environment that you're around. And so it depends. It, it's very different how I view men in public versus men and women as clients. Uh, also, though, they're, they're, also they're, women for making for friendships with, though, as well. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, it's again, that, that more empathy, but it's different how I look at men. So if it's not I, can I ask you to turn off the coach right now and expert and yes. let's talk about interaction with, you know, just you being yourself in uh, so like you mentioned that, you know, empathy and, uh, you know, you're trying to be more empathetic and warm. And is that to women or men or both like that empathy directed to who? When you're yourself, well, it, you're not a coach. It, it's to both. Mm -hmm. There's also the flip side here oh. is there's also the flip side here that because a lot of listeners here are what I would consider intuitive empaths. I am as well. There's also like this, this awareness that that quality is, I think a very special quality. Okay. So what is intuitive empath to you? Like, can you describe it? Like what, uh, what type of quality, what do you notice? Like, what is it? Very sensitive to the environment. Environment pick up of the vibe uh, of a room. Okay. So what is vibe of the room? And I'm leading into you into that rabbit hole. It's the way people move. It's mm -hmm. the micro expression. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's uh, basically it's the movement. So the vibe energy, and I used to break my head before and, uh, um, I was married before I was divorced. I've had issues, uh, a lot of issues with uh, dating life and that all came from experiences. And I think the way I handled and I responded was the movement was my actions, my awareness, my assertiveness. So it all mattered. So to me, the energy part, and I was like, man, so that, that, you know, the masculine energy, okay. The warrior, okay. The sexual energy, then the feminine energy. And uh, like, like, how can I embody it? Like, what is it? What is that energy? It's a learned movement pattern to me. So me right now, masculine energy. Now me, uh, I'm just, you know, uh, inner child. So all I'm thinking, and, and I always used to tell my clients too, um, how do you fight at, at someone if, overly sexual to you. They're all like, I'm doing it right now. So oh, like the Rico Suave. No, 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 no. That's, okay. that's over exaggeration. It's, yeah, uh, of course. so first what I can do, I can do it to your left eye down to your cheek, down into your right eye. So things like that, then, uh, you know, the, the micro gestures. So it woman does the same thing, you know, you know, the way they look at you like this. And like right now I'm thinking like I have big breasts, I have like big butt and I'm loving Tilt the stuff. chin down a little bit, oh, look oh, up. Yeah, yeah, so now all I'm doing, I'm memorizing and remembering what that movement of, and you know, what is that image of sexuality that I've noticed that I was like, whoa, that was twisting my gear. So I'm taking that 
scanned movement pattern and applying it to myself. So now if woman feels that man becomes overly sexual, overly chat, trying to lure in, all she has to do, think about her being a little girl. And all that tension, all that just flies by. Go play in the woods. And he is all trying to seduce you. He's trying to, and, and that happens a lot. And, all you and there's a danger. There is a danger to this, ladies, because some guys out there are going to try and do that, initiate that contact really early, because what it does is it stimulates oxytocin and dopamine too early. It releases the stress. So now we're going back into the subject of um, how to avoid it. So the moment you turn on inner child energy and you remember yourself, go back and remember yourself being a little girl playing in the fields and, you know, Looking well, actually, it's funny you mention that because I have a couple kid photos here in my Leela Quantum block. Perfect. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> you know, the inner child work is really important. So here's mm -hmm. a cute little Perfect. So there. all you have to do when you try to lower that, you you go back and you remember yourself being innocent, playing around. So inner child and your body will translate that micro expressions and movement. And that's going to completely, you know, lower that projection of sexual energy for man who's trying to hit on you because you projecting oh, and, you so good. and you translating into environment, that innocence, that little playful inner child, unless they're sick and you know, they have issues, then that's going to basically bring their, you know, projection and, of sexual energy towards you down because now subconsciously his body perceives that pattern of inner child behavior micro expression of inner child so you can literally bring that up that sexual energy oh i can bring your sexual energy up magically no 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 baby you basically so good with your movement patterns your micro expressions that you can position yourself tweak yourself that you can arouse men so same thing. Sometimes you forget about it and maybe somebody is uh, hyper empathetic and they can notice minuscule things. And you have that creep guy that's like, I <laughs> but you did it because your movement patterns, you know, instigated that. So the way to fight that off, turn that inner child. So the antidote to sexual energy would be inner child energy. So antidote to you know, wounded masculine energy, aggressive energy would be a feminine energy. Because if you start, uh, and I make this example of uh, in the club. So there's, and again, I'm going to take a scale, six out of 10, 10 out of 10 beauty woman, fully integrated into her femininity, very beautiful, 10 out of 10, six out of 10, you know, another lady there. So that six out of 10 gets approached by drunk belligerent guy. And, oh, leave me alone. Like, oh, get out of here. She is so face. So she turned on her masculine energy. And that drunk guy, all he sees expression of weak masculine energy. So automatically he starts fighting it. So that's where the awareness and, you know, your ability to adapt to the environment, to, you know, what's around you comes in. You have to calibrate. So the moment you see that dangerous expression of uncontrolled mass, like the wounded masculine, I guess, whatever you guys call it, it's dangerous. It's uncontrolled. It's emotionally provoked. Softness, vulnerability, do not fight. You're going to get hurt. You have to soften up, show tears. And you know that, that uh, pheromone wise, when a woman secretes tears, it actually drops natural testosterone in man by 30 or 40%. Man exposed to. I've never heard that before. Google it. It's it's in the study. So man exposed to woman tears. That's why a man cannot stand woman tears. That's a natural protective biological mechanism. The same thing when female uh, breastfeeds and her prolactin levels are high. So uh, chemical exchange happens. Man's prolactin levels go up. So what is prolactin is sex satiety, sexual satiety hormone that basically brings man testosterone down, makes him more sedentary. So he sticks to the woman and her offspring. He doesn't wander away and try to reproduce with others. So nature has wonderful ways biologically to, you know, and now if you've been always taught, don't show your tears, be tough, strong woman. And that, uh, that situation comes, you can't get soft. You can't that woman, you're going to get hurt. 
because you're reassembling the body, the movement patterns, you know, the, the behavior of a weaker man. He's going to hurt you. He's going to come and overcome you and, 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 and show his dominance because drunk, whatever, not all there, you know, driven by emotions, whatever it is, not able to do the right thing. So calibration, be calibrated and be in a, a master of energy fluidity, speaking your language right now, where you can, you know, uh, here's me. So how are you? How fantastic. do you feel right now? You I'm learning so much. I feel oh, great. You're feeling, you're feeling fantastic right now, huh? Mm -hmm. What you didn't tell me. Do you see what did I what did I switch right now? My movement patterns, the way I sit, the way I talk, my micro expression, the voice, and I'm a dude. So just switching the the, the patterns of micro expressions can absolutely change the direction of any type of human interaction between man and woman. And so we just have to be so aware and be able to calibrate on the go to make other people feel better. Also, you know, in woman's case to protect themselves. And that's the biggest lesson here that I want to say is when you feel danger, uh, you feel overexpression of sexual energy, uh, you feel like, you know, someone, a man is not safe in uncontrolled, aggressive. Biggest thing is turn that vulnerability, tears, and, and just remove yourself. But don't ever start fighting back because that can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is basically situational awareness. So for everybody tuning in here, You've heard me preach this to the cows come home. You did a milk reference. So I threw that in there that we definitely need to have an awareness of oxidative stressors in our environment from air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, the food we eat, yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metal, parasites, and pathogens. You really have to have a handle on that because it's going to impact your biology. If your toxic burden gets too full. And once you do that, then you can start to have a greater situational awareness of people, places, and things, relationships, your work life, your friendships, your family dynamics with having this additional awareness, because you become so clear that you can actually have more of self-awareness of yourself so that you can then have an awareness of others and then discern if those people are actually displaying things that make you feel good or that make you feel on edge and tune into the spidey senses. Being an intuitive empath is a little bit, it's a little challenging at times because we can pick up on so much. So that's why with the show here and the way that Mike is speaking, this type of um, communication to listen to, I think is so much better because it's not that high beta state like you did with the real demonstration. When people lean in and they're all aggressive and they got the T-Rex hands and they're trying to get this information in your head, but really it's just going to stimulate adrenaline and cortisol. It's not going to make you feel any better. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, being cool, calm, collected, having this awareness of your situation of people, places, and things is such an important asset that I don't think another pe enough people talk about because if you don't, the environment that you're in around people are going to start affecting your hormones. They're going to start affecting your life. And so to really have that sovereign ownership of yourself and to have a better understanding of others, I think is just really going to, you know, save people a lot of heartache and being around people in situations that aren't in the highest. So Mike, I think that you are wealth of knowledge. You're probably, you know, we're an hour and 15 minutes in here. I would love to have you back on the show because we didn't even get to the questions that you provided here on the show, which is like your zone of genius. We, you know, really kind of focused a little bit more on movement, on micro expressions, and also that inner child stuff of why we show up the way that we do so from the, the, oh my gosh, like Mike, you're, you're brilliant at this stuff. And I'm so glad that the Instagram algorithm 
showed me your reels. And I just, I really appreciate what you're doing for guys. And I like this stuff for the ladies as well. Um, Do you have any closing, closing remarks for today's episode? Uh, So um, my closing would be as uh, for the ladies. And I believe like to me as if lady is overly sensory and overly, I guess, like what you could call it intuitive empath. It's like too much happening. Like we're talking sights, Mm -hmm. sounds, smells, Mm -hmm. vibrations. All it tells me you detach from your femininity. Uh, You are unable to ground. You are unable to focus on what's inside on you. You're so concerned about, Oh, is that going to serve me or this going to serve me? Or, you know, so all you're going to do, you're just going to put yourself, uh, subconsciously in fight or flight state. So you, your cortisol, your adrenaline is going to be up. So, uh, what is me? How do I feel? And what I, when I used to coach women, I always tell them, uh, and bodybuilding girls like bikini wellness, you know, I call coach the wellness Olympia. And I would used to share with her, uh, Devin, you got to wake up in the morning and look down deep down yourself and ask yourself, what do I love about myself? Like, what is it today? Is that my hair? Is that part of my body? And you attach to that love and you go for it. That's it. And you don't worry about anything else. You feeling beautiful about your hair, feel beautiful about your hair, attach to that feeling. You feeling beautiful about your radiance and whatever it is, expression it is, expand on it and make it all about you. The less you start becoming like a guy hey doors there exit there window uh there's two guys right now working on the loan uh so my lady probably in that room you're you're turning yourself into a guy that's how i think because i'm trying to protect and provide so that response uh, and being aware of that response is is that really going to serve you is your biology is primed and able to withstand that type of stress we handle stress differently so same with man reading man i like honestly i wouldn't even want to tell woman what to look for in man because all it's going to do is just going to frustrate him more give him more stress and going to push those men away because the more i tell him what the more i tell him what to look in man it detaches them from themselves so closing here i believe in universal law of polar's opposite attraction so we attract exact polar opposite of ourselves if you bring in into your orbit men that are not assertive you know they're they have holes in their masculinity lady you have holes in your femininity and you have to surround yourself in a strong feminine network and address those things so get an expert help fixing your biology first then surround yourself in the right network and biggest thing here for dating advice single woman keep each other single so you have to put yourself in the wife circles and start taking advice from wives the more you segregate yourself into the single circles the more single you're going to stay that's my closing oh my gosh mike you're so good you're so good you're so right Right. Because my framework was, okay, I have to look for this. I have to look for that. Those are the things to avoid. And you're absolutely right. Because when you're looking for things that you need to avoid, that's what you're going to be looking for. And what you said is so perfect that, you know, truly stepping into our masculine or or feminine qualities is, is truly something that for me and my upbringing, these were never things that were really instilled. So if I've experienced that, I'm sure other people have as well. And my life is so much better now that I'm more feminine, by the way. I noticed, you know, I do my hair extra beautiful. My body looks fantastic because I'm at the gym. I have more energy. I'm doing good things with my life. I have great friends. I'm having fun with life. I'm enjoying little things throughout the day, finding the joys in little things and not doing escapism so many people do that they just kind of tune out with stuff online last question so you're doing that escapism is that gonna attract the man of your dreams your your what you do how you you know keeping yourself happy is that gonna be some that that other man of you know that you looking qualities 
is that man with all the qualities that you desire, is that going to be the beacon for him? So everything that you do, so because you become visible with, you know, the places you choose to go, the way you move, the way you dress, the way you respond, react, the way your circle is. So, and I think that awareness is that what helped me attract my perfect woman, I asked myself like this, I know exactly what I wanted in a woman. Like that was like, boom, 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 boom. And then I asked myself, I am that man. If I want all these qualities in the lady, can I give her what she desires? What would be the polar opposite? It's not about what I want, but do I have enough radiance to be seen visible like a beacon for the person that I desire to attract into my orbit? So it's not really all about us and what we do and how we stay happy because at the end of the day, we always, we were meant together. And woman mm -hmm. always feels the most happiest and safest and at ease when she has a strong shoulder, the rock that she can hide it behind and know that, Hey, I don't have to worry about security of the future. I don't have to worry about anything. So are you radiating exact qualities to be noticed by that man of your dreams? Beautiful. So on that note, Mike, where can everybody find you? Uh, Instagram at planet Mike underscore. And uh, that's it. And you guys uh, free to, you know, DM me. Um, I always respond. And uh, yeah, um, also I'm available for consults. Um, link is in bio. So if we have any more questions, I'll be glad to share uh, my life experiences and of course advice with uh, hormones, gut, uh, mindset. Uh, and for men, of course, self-improvement. So for women, I only offer one-on-one -on -one consults. I do not get into coaching with women. And I believe that uh, there's a much better outcome when women coach coaches women and men coach coaches men. Yeah, interesting. Now I want to do a consultation with you because you got right into it on this podcast here. You're very good at what you do. And I thank you for that. I thank you for showing up and showing your radiance because it does come through. So for everybody tuning in, Mike's information is in the show notes of this episode. Thank you so much for your time, Mike. I truly am, an, am honored by what you shared because it's such a fresh perspective for me. And this, this is all related to health. And look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. And until the next episode, stay high vibe. Be beautiful, be radiant, and enjoy even the small nuanced things in life with a little bit more slowness and softness and pleasure.